All right, gentlemen, we're back with the Lethality Series. This one's going to be a quick one. Shouldn't be longer than 10 minutes or so. Uh, CQB is coming. It's in the works. Trust me. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a CQB video here. Uh, but recently, I was kind of just giving a class to some buddies about how to pack your rucksack, and I figure might as well make it fit for YouTube as well. So without further ado, here is Ruck Packing 101, a.k.a. how to not book a one-way ticket to snap city uh when you're out patrolling and doing stuff in the woods so moving on my background so for those of you that are new to the channel uh my background is i grew up hiking i was a boy scout i made it all the way up to eagle scout uh did a few backpacking trips during my time there before the military and then obviously i did a lot a lot of rucking um before the military and then obviously during it. Uh, six years, the first Ranger Battalion. Most of you guys know all this stuff. So I was an extended stay Ranger School student. So I did a lot of rucking and fucking shit in the woods with a, a large, heavy ass backpack. And uh, bottom line fucking is that I know how to carry shit and carry it well. Uh, and I'm going to teach you guys the best way, the most optimal way to pack your rucks. Um, it isn't rocket science and, uh, we're going to get right into it. So to ask properly pack a large external or internal frame backpack conditions, get a large rucksack gear for a casual two night outing anticipating wet conditions and standard individuals will pack the rucks, rucks optimized for weight, balance, comfort, and access to critical gear. Uh, it's kind of a made up scenario. You can use whatever kind of mission you're trying to build it out for. Um, this isn't going to be a video on how to best select a rucksack I like the best rucksacks because i still use an alice pack uh arguably you know not the best rucksack in the world but it's one that i know very intimately and i know how to pack it so this if you don't take anything else away from this video this is the the biggest fucking key that you need to know so heavy items need to be higher up in the ruck and the closest to the frame so and by heavy items we're talking about like food water ammunition special equipment, shit that is, you know, dense, you know, more dense than clothing. And then lighter items, you want to be lower inside the rucksack and more on the outside and away from the frame. So your sleep system, wet weather gear, clothes, poncho, etc., are all going to be kind of back and away from the frame of the rucksack. And you can see here, I've got my Alice pack packed out. Got a one liter canteen, two liter canteen, e-tool, and on the other side is a 100 or 200 round saw pouch. It's just kind of a all purpose utility pouch you'll see later. So does anyone have 550 easily accessible? This is something that you would hear every fucking morning in the patrol base when we do leadership changeover. Um, because you're doing new tie downs, you're doing tie downs for radio batteries, you're doing all this, all this shit. And people would always ask, does anyone have any 550 easily accessible? Because they fucking used all theirs already or something. So when you're packing, you want to keep in mind items that you'll need during the movement or patrol, uh, such as wet weather gear, a poncho, you know, change of socks, lighter 550, special equipment, sunscreen, baby wipes, whatever. Uh, and you want to pack these items on external, in, in, ex in external pouches or, you know, near the top of your rucksack, uh, so you don't have to dig all the way into your pack to fucking find these items. You can just set your rucksack down, or if you're in a patrol base or ORP, you can just pop into one of these outside pouches without turning your rucksack into a... And this is also going to apply to any kind of special equipment that you're carrying, such as like a Skedco, a litter, rope kit, uh, 240 fucking bipod or tripod rather. Uh, a yeah, you want this shit to be basically underneath your top flap or like I said, in the side pockets or side pouches. So waterproofing takes a second to load in there. Move myself down here. So you always want to waterproof everything in your rucksack, even if you don't anticipate rain, you never know. You can't really predict rain in the field and chances are it's going to rain on you or you're going to have to do a water crossing and you don't want your sleeping bag and the rest of your shit getting fucking soaked. So, Always, always waterproof everything. It also helps for organization. If you're using like the one gallon Ziploc bags, you can put your smaller items in there uh, and you can have different bags for different things, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So 
here are your options. You've got contractor bags, which I'll talk about here more in a second. You've got your standard USGI wet weather bags. You've got these big fucking Ziploc bags. These things are massive and they're actually fucking clutch for organizing and waterproofing your rucksack. And then you've got your traditional hiking style dry bags or canoeing dry bags, right? I'm not really a fan of these myself personally because one, they're a little bit pricey. Two, they just kind of get bulky and they're a little bit more difficult to use. Uh, again, my opinion, I like what I like. Uh, perfectly viable option though for most people, right? So I'm a little picky and I don't like to buy more gear than I necessarily need. So I've got a bunch of wet weather bags. Uh, we'll talk contract bags for a second. So in Florida phase, which I did three of, uh, I had my parents send me out a big like 50 bag roll of these contractor bags and they were sick. Uh, they're super, super durable. Uh, and I would use those for waterproofing in my rucksack. I would carry about three, two or three on me uh, during Florida phase, like the actual patrol portion of Florida. So 10 days out in the field in the swamps, you're doing at least two swamp movements. Uh, you got Santa Rosa, you might do an extra boat movement. Uh, so having your stuff waterproof as well as, you know, it would rain a lot too. So waterproofing was absolutely critical in the swamp style environment. And so what I would do is I would line the inside of my ruck frame or the inside of my rucksack with at least one. Sometimes I would double them up if, if one of these bags was a little bit more damaged. Uh, and before like the swamp movement specifically where you do it, where you do a river crossing and your entire rucksack was going to get soaked. Uh, I would put everything just about into these contractor bags uh, and then I would tie them off and gooseneck them at the top, which I'm going to show you kind of how to do later on here. So super underrated. They're super lightweight. They're super durable, especially if you layer them up uh, and it's easy to carry an extra one or two bags if so desired because they're not heavy. Uh, and other recommended essentials. So I like to carry a fix-it kit. So basically just zip ties. Uh, elastic shot cores, some spare fast X buckles, potentially uh, electrical or 100 mile an hour tape. Yeah, if you're carrying 100 mile an hour tape, either wrap it around a pen or get one of those one inch wide rolls. So you're not carrying the big ass roll of fucking 100 mile an hour tape uh, and waterproof matches. Um, and then a survival kit um, with, you know, secondary means water purification, a lighter 550, extra knife, maybe emergency poncho, survival blanket, etc. Uh, and I like to keep those kind of in a semi readily accessible area. So usually in the top flap or an exterior pouch. Fix it kit can go really anywhere because you're not going to need necessarily fast access to that. If your rut goes down during a patrol and you have to fucking fix it, chances are you're going to have to take a short halt anyways to do so. All right, we'll talk special equipment here. This is a little bit more pertains to ranger school and, you know, actual patrolling uh, as most dudes out there aren't going to have a whole lot of this stuff. So most rucksacks, especially military ones, you have this top flap, which you can kind of see over this ranger student's head um, or extra long uh, adjustment webbing that allow you to strap things down external to the main pouch. Um, Cause you can only fit so much shit in the main pouch, right? Uh, but most good rucksacks will be kind of expandable to accompany these larger bulkier items. Uh, and these will vary from tripods to a barrel bag for a machine gun, Skedco, like I said, rocket launchers and a uh, road bridge kit, etc. Ranger school you'll carry. You'll see dudes carrying the AT4 through their top flap. Um, the big thing is most of these items are pretty heavy, so naturally they should be there anyways. So it kind of works out. Um, and most of this is going to be mission essential gear, so it's recommended that you tie it down. Um, that's kind of a ranger schoolism for sure. Uh, but in real life, if I was carrying a fucking big ass radio or, you know, even maybe, I don't think we ever really tied our fucking tripods down in Ranger Regiment, but Ranger School, you kind of do that more. Uh, but if you're running as like a civilian outfit or a fucking concerned citizens outfit, like you don't want to lose that equipment. So might be good to tie it down. So here's another picture of some Ranger students. You can see the tripod here in this guy's top flap. Um, you can see kind of how they're packing their stuff out, right? They're two liter canteens and this is SOP for Ranger school, right? So their two liter canteens are down low. They have their utility pouches up here. Their light sleeping mats are on the external of their rucksack. They're not up here. They're kind of, you know, these are light, they're foam. So they're down and away 
from the main heavy part. You want all the heavy shit up in this area, right? All right, so tie downs, we'll talk about them real quick. So if you are going to tie stuff down, it's going to be an inland bowline on the frame of the rucksack or some solid piece of webbing to inland bowline or girth hitch around the item. So again, if you're a civilian or whatever, you don't really need to do this and you don't need to get mega autistic about it. This isn't ranger school. Um, and at the minimum gear that I would tie down would be canteens and special equipment. Like you don't want to lose your canteens necessarily and you don't really... You would want those to be kind of, you know, on your body. You don't want to lose your water source, right? All right, so here is an example layout of me packing for a hypothetical two-day trip. I did forget a few things here, which I'll talk about here, but you can see my Alice pack. You can see my poncho, wet weather top, wet weather bottoms, survival kit, uh, just kind of extra items, canteen with canteen cup, e-tool, two-liter water bottle, change of clothes, sleep system, uh, camel back, food, ammunition, toiletries, uh, and yeah, so I'm going to show you kind of how all that stuff goes in. So the first things you want to pack are going to be on the outside pouches of your ruck because those are get going to get harder to fill if you fill the main pouch of your rucksack up first, right? So I'm always going to pack from the outside in and then from the bottom to the top. So we've got a kind of just a utilitarian table bag. There's uh, some body glide. There's some 550 spare pair of socks in here. Um, poncho wet weather top and then you can see in here the wet weather bottoms so those are all packed in these four pouches here and then we're going to fill the top little tiny pouches with five more 550 cord bug spray sunscreen net gator fleece cap baby wipes little uh poop shovel those fit nicely in there and then we're going to do the outside the rest of the outside pockets so the canteen canteen cup e-tool two liter or a two quart water canteen. Those are in there, as you can see. And then now this, all this, this rattle kit is going in the top flap of the rucksack along with a trash bag and some elastic shot cord. Uh, next, moving on to the sleep system. Sleep system should generally be in the bottom of your rucksack because you're only gonna need that once a day, right? So you don't need quick access to your sleep system. You're not gonna be going to bed quick if you're on patrol, right? So I've also got a hammock in here with hammock straps, fleece top bottom, uh, and a microfiber towel just to, you know, kind of clean up at the, after the end of the day. Or if you're, you know, you go swimming somewhere in a lake or a mountain stream. So those are in here. And this is how I like to tie off the top of these wet weather bags. I don't really like using the provided strings. Uh, so typically I'll twist the, the top of the bag around, create a gooseneck, and then I'm going to fold it over itself and then secure it with either retainer bands, um, which they kind of suck because they will dry rot and snap over time. So you can also use just a small piece of 550 cord um, because you're going to have a ton of it. Right. So, you know, in this situation, I do I'm carrying ammunition, like extra ammo that's not going to be on my person. So there's four mags and these are in the, the radio flap or the radio pouch of the Alice pack. Right. Next, we're going to throw in the uh, clothes bag and I'm carrying two wet weather bags because I want to compartmentalize, you know, I might need to change the clothes more than I need the fucking full sleep system, right? So we've got our socks, we've got a combat top, combat bottoms, and an extra dry weather bag. And that's in there. And then I'm packing the MREs on the, you know, close to the frame up top. And there's, there's still a decent amount of room in this rucksack, right? Like we could probably fit another three or four MREs if we really, really wanted to. Uh, but I didn't want to break open another box of MREs just to make this video, right? So last but not least, a 100-ounce camelback in the top. I like to carry my camelbacks because you can run up ladder just easily, super easily inside the rucksack, but I get sketched out about camelbacks. I like to have and give them a little bit more protection, um, especially if there's going to be anything that's going to be going on top of this. It's just better to have it in some kind of sleeve um, or standalone carrier. Um, this is also good. I use this on my, my little backpacking trip up in Idaho last September. I carried this exact, pretty much this exact setup minus like the e-tool. And I ran a little hydration carrier and it was good because we did some day hikes and it was good to be able to carry a large amount of water easily. So the big thing is you want that hose to come out on the non-firing side 
of your rucksack, right? So I'm a lefty, so my left shoulder strap is left unencumbered by my camelback. And then I've just got these little pieces of 550 on the uh, adjustment straps here so that I can like loop it through and kind of give it some retention, right? Uh, and the other big thing you want to do is once you have your bag packed and it's all cinched down and good, uh, you want to tie off or tape off any excess webbing that's coming off the back of these straps. So this is just one of the little pouches on the front or rather the back of the Alice pack. And I've got it adjusted to where I can fit all that I'll need to fit into that. Give myself a little bit of extra space to, to adjust and cinch down. And then I take most of it off. You don't want to be running around the woods with a bunch of, you know, just straps dangling off of your rucksack. Uh, it doesn't look cool. It doesn't look professional. And it potentially is going to be a snag hazard for you. So that is Ruck Packing 101. It's really easy. You don't need to make it harder than it is. Um, again, this isn't a fucking video about, oh, here's how to pack for X type of patrol, right? It's going to be, you know, mission dependent, what you pack in your rucksack. You know, maybe you're just going for a couple day casual backpacking trip with your buddies, right? Uh, same principles will apply when it comes to packing your ruck there as it will for military operations. So hope this was useful. Hope this was insightful. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you need clarification on anything, of course, and uh, we will see you next week, potentially.